Oh, hello there. I'm Bochen a cute bear. Hey there. I'm Nimikun a cute bear. I'm Nimikun a cute bear. I'm Nimikun a cute bear. All right, everyone should remember by now. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Should I try to? Let's not. Things will get out of hand. Hara. <laughs> All right. Let's get to the main topic. Okay. So, can you recall what we talked about last time regarding theorems? A theorem is within that axiomatic system. A claim that's so important that it's kind of a key point, right? Exactly, that's right. Then this time, I'll explain about lemmas. Okay. To put it simply, when you're proving a theorem, just before reaching a the claim that's quite closely related to that theorem, is called the lemma. For that theorem. Something like this. Oh, you've drawn yet another part of the diagram. Hara. Now I'll explain in more detail the criteria for a claim to be called a lemma. Yes. First, just like with theorems, the claim appearing in this diagram, that is a claim that can be proven correct, is a prerequisite. Makes sense. And another basic prerequisite is that. In order to prove a theorem, starting from the axiom, as you expand the known scope downwards, somewhere before you reach the theorem. In other words, simply put, a claim you use when proving that theorem. So basically, it appears in a place like this. Yes, exactly. By the way, there's no ambiguity with these two conditions, right? Ah, uh, you mean the condition of appearing in the diagram and the condition of appearing somewhere between the axiom and the theorem. So there's no difficult or unclear boundary. Exactly, that's right. A lap flap, snap, snap. <laughs> Hara. Then the final condition is this. If you take the lemma as a giving, that is. Starting from this point, proving the theorem or reaching it is easy. So, you mean the lemma appears just a little above the theorem? There's that, but there's also another important thing. What is it? For the claims that act as a premise other than the lemma when leading to the theorem, they are simple. So they appear higher up. Exactly. If proving this claim is challenging, then even if you understand the lemma, you're far from done with the theorem's proof. Because you still have to prove this challenging claim. Right, if you start from the lemma, proving the theorem becomes easy. So once you prove the lemma, you've practically proved the theorem. Yes, exactly. The image of a lemma is as you've just described. Once you can prove it, it's almost as good as proving the theorem. It's a claim that's almost the same as the theorem. All right. Oh, I see. Got it. By the way, I just thought of this. If the lemma's proof makes up most of the theorem's proof, does that mean there can be more than one lemma for a single theorem? Your understanding is quite accurate. But strictly speaking, there might be various ways to prove the same theorem. In this diagram, it means there's more than one way to get from the axiom to the theorem. Exactly. So, if the ways of proving are different to begin with, each could have its own lemma. Oh, I see. Conversely, if the theorem's proof consists of combining several moderately difficult claims compared to the theorem, what happens? In that case, there's no lemma at all. 
Yes, exactly. I think I'm getting it. Hara. After all, a lemes. To put it extremely, a claim that feels almost like just a rephrasing of the theorem. But it's made easier to prove than the theorem itself. What do you mean? In this diagram. If you try to proceed directly from the axiom. To the theorem, it's hard to predict the path. So, from the theorem. You work backwards to the lemma. So that when you start from the axiom. It's easier to get there. Alright. Of course, this is possible sometimes and not others. I came in for the gas station near a friend's house I'm visiting for the first time. That's a great analogy. Well put. By the way, this idea of having a hard time finding a friend's house. So you work backwards from a nearby gas station and in for that during the proof. Is useful even for challenging problems. At the middle and high school levels, not just for advanced math. It's like first proving a mini lemma, then using it to prove a mini theorem. Ha! Uh, I went up making analogies. Ha! <laughs> uh, do you really? <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Hara. Right.